Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome to another Little Phoenix Point video. It's been a, a little while since I have made one for my own channel at least. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to actually talk a little bit about the way that the aiming system and the projectile physics system works in Phoenix Point. So before I go any further, full disclosure, I do work for Snapshot Games, the developer of Phoenix Point. This is not a promoted or sponsored video in any other way, uh, but of course I do work for the developer so I am on the payroll so just keep that in mind if you think I am selling this product because in a way I am. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because the way that the aiming system works in Phoenix Point is very very different to the way that it works in the modern Firaxis XCOM games and this seems to be something that not a lot of people pick up instantly and I want to talk a little bit about the way those two systems work and the way that they differ from one another and also talk a little bit about the control system and the way the aiming works in Phoenix Point because at the moment uh, we don't have the UI fully locked down, we don't have all the, the tool tips and we don't have a tutorial. So we do supply the, the backer build, the early access, it does come with a PDF game guide. Not many people read that which is understandable, most people expect the game to kind of teach you as you go along via tutorials and, and on-screen prompts which of course will be the case when the game is completed uh, but also a lot of people just jump straight in with their XCOM experience with their XCOM knowledge and expect that it's going to be the same because when you look at Phoenix Point it does look quite similar the interface is very very similar um, it, uh, you've got these sort of two zones on the map which looks like the sort of the mo single move and dash move that you have in XCOM even though Phoenix Point doesn't work that way because it has a full time unit system where you can literally just sort of shuffle along one space at a time and and carry on moving but it also has a, a completely different method of aiming so first of all you've probably all seen the memes particularly if you have played the Firaxis XCOM games you will have all seen the memes where a guy's got a shotgun in a sectoid's face he's literally chewing on the muzzle and it's only a 65% chance to hit you've probably also all experienced a shot where uh, you've had your gun in the alien's face and your character just sort of turns 90 degrees and fires off to the side and you've probably even experienced situations where you've taken a shot You've actually seen the bullet hit the alien, but it tells you that you've missed. Now that's all to do with the way that the aiming system works in XCOM. So basically you have positive stats and negative stats. So whenever you take a shot at an enemy, first of all the game looks at the positive stats. So what is the um, aim stat for your particular soldier? Uh, what weapon are they using? Because that can give them a boost to uh, their aim, to their attack stat. Uh, are they elevated? Because units that are higher up usually get an, ad an advantage so they get a bonus to aim. Also the distance, the closer you are to the target, the higher the chance of the shot is usually to hit. Now, once you've got that positive statistic, you then remove the negative statistic. So that negative statistic is going to be, um, is the enemy behind cover? Is it half cover or full cover? Does that enemy have a height advantage? If they're higher than you, you'll have less chance to hit them. Very, very uh, obvious against things like floaters. Does that enemy have any particular uh, skill that gives it an extra defense statistic? So what can happen there is you can actually have a really high chance to hit. You can be right next to your target with a shotgun in its face, but the way the stats balance, you've only got a 65% chance to hit. So even though it sh you shouldn't ever be able to miss from that distance with a shotgun, the game decides that there's only a 65% chance to hit. And what you're then doing when you hit fire is the game is rolling a dice against that 65% and deciding whether or not it's a hit or a miss. The animation that you actually see at that point is basically just some set dressing. It's just a, an animation that happens to represent uh, what the dice roll outcome is. This is why you get those instances where you see uh, a soldier at point blank range take a shot and they just sort of turn 90 degrees and completely miss. Because even though it looks like they should hit, the game has decided via the dice roll that it's a miss, so the animation has to reflect that. And the only way the animation can reflect that is by shooting off at some weird angle. It's also the same issue when you have those shots that actually look like they've hit the enemy. That's just because the animation is not pathing the bullets very well and they seem to go through the target, but the dice roll says that you miss. Now, Phoenix Point works completely differently. We don't have these positive and negative stats. 
Obviously, there are things like armor and cover does exist, and you do have accuracy, but those things aren't used to determine whether or not you hit or miss. Phoenix Point actually uses uh, ray-traced physics bullets, so every single round that is fired, and again, another difference with Phoenix Point is the majority of weapons actually fire in bursts of multiple rounds. There are some exceptions, of course, like the pistol and the sniper rifle fires a single shot at a time, but things like the PDW, um, the assault rifles, the machine guns, they, f they fire multiple shots, and each one of those shots has a chance to hit. So if, for example, here I take my technician who I've got selected, if I go and hit the aim button, you'll see that I lock on to the closest enemy here and I can tab and cycle my way through the different targets that I can see. So at first glance, this is pretty much the way that it works in XCOM. And you can actually see where I'm aiming, that little yellow dot in the center of the crosshair. And of course, all the time, these creatures are moving. They have an idle animation, and my aim is sort of tracking uh, that animation. And as I tab around, you can see that that applies to all of my targets. Now, I've been watching a lot of uh, streamers and YouTubers playing this, and many of them seem to either completely miss or discover really, really late in the game that you can actually go into free aim mode. Now, it actually tells you at the top of the screen here, it says you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. You can also use T and G on the keyboard. Uh, but if you zoom in, you instantly go into the free aim mode. Now, I've seen some people also think that this is uh, like body part targeting and you have to click on the body part you want to target. Now, the curse, the um, crosshair will snap to wherever you click, but the best way to aim is to just hold down the mouse button and just click and drag. So you can just drag this wherever you want. But it's not body part targeting because if you want, you can just aim at a wall. You know, it's free aim. You can fire absolutely anywhere that you want to. So when you go into the free aim mode, you see these two concentric circles. And if you zoom in, the size of the circles gets larger. They stay the same relative to everything around them. So if I aim at this uh, crab man's head, for example, um, you can see that the, um, the inner circle there, let me just uh, redo that. The inner circle, it's now it's sticking to the mouse, there we go. The inner circle is around about the same size as the crab man's head, just a little bit smaller. If I zoom further out, the size of that inner circle stays the same relative to the crab man's head. If I zoom further in, it stays the same. So zooming in and out doesn't increase your chance to hit. It's not like you're using some crazy sniper zoom. It just allows you to... to you know, look into the distance and see a little bit better. So the reason you've got these two circles and the reason one says 100% and one says 50% is because this is telling you where those bullets are going to land. So 100% of the shots you fire will land inside the blue circle. So every single shot is going to land somewhere in here. That includes the middle part as well. So anywhere inside this outer circle, every single bullet will land. The inner circle represents where approximately 50% of the shots will land. Now, it's actually, it is it is randomized, but it's also on a bell curve, which means that shots are more likely to land somewhere around this inner circle. They're less likely to land right in the middle. They're less likely to land right at the edge. They're going to land somewhere around this middle circle. But, you know, there is a spread. You will get some shots that do hit in the middle. You will get some shots that do hit at the edge. Now, if I'm really close to a target like this crab man here, you can actually see, and I'm doing it again, I'm sticking it to the mouse, uh, you can actually see here that this circle, to sort my mouse out, it's, it's not, being, not behaving at the moment, you can actually see that this outer circle is 100% full of target. This means I cannot miss. If I fire at this range, every single shot is guaranteed to hit because the target is taking up the entire circle. There's nowhere that bullets can to miss. If I was taking the shot here, for example, bullets could go here, which means they could miss the target. There's the potential for them to actually not hit anything. If I was taking a shot at... I don't have two targets that are sort of right next to each other, unfortunately, but if I was taking a shot at one target and there was another target behind it, I can probably get into a position to do that, actually. Let, let's just... Um, let me just sort of move into a better position to demonstrate that so here's probably a good one so let's move over here and as usual we spot something so if i move over here and i aim at this target 
So again, I've got a 100% shot here. Now, if I aim slightly up, uh, there's now a chance that I could hit either of these two targets because both of them are filling up this crosshair. In fact, if I were to actually fire here, I'd probably hit both of them. Let's just go and take that shot. And we did. We didn't do any damage to this one because I hit his carapace, which is highly armoured. Uh, but we did actually hit both both targets. So that is one of the reasons why the, the free aim system exists. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't seem to realize is the way that armor value works. So as you actually move around and aim at different parts of the enemy, you'll see over here on the right-hand side uh, a number of statistics. You can see the number of shots that you fire per burst and the amount of damage you do per shot. So in terms of the PDW, the PDW fires four shots and it does three damage per shot. So if you were to hit a target that was unarmoured, you would do four times three damage. You would hit for 12 damage. However, each point of armour reduces that damage by one on each shot. So if I put my bullets into the carapace here, the carapace has three armour and I only do three damage, which means I'm not going to do any damage at all because every single shot is going to be reduced to zero. If I were to aim at another body part, for example, you can see here that this body part only has one armor. So that would reduce the damage per shot if they hit that body part down to two. So I'd get four shots that could each potentially do two damage each if they all hit. So if I just try and get as much of that leg in as possible, I mean, obviously, of course, if I sort of aim over here, I'm leaving some empty space where bullets could miss my target. If I aim to the left a little bit there, uh, there's no empty space. We're going to hit this part here, which is the other leg. So we can sort of aim right here, and we're either going to hit this leg or that leg. And they both have the same armor value. So if I, I fire my shots here, uh, we actually do six damage and we, um, we break the leg. Now, it's worth noting that the enemies do actually flinch when you hit them, so sometimes, even though your aim might be absolutely spot on, uh, when you take the shot, if they do flinch or move, or some of them will actually have an animation where they can uh, block, like the Queen, for example, she'll put her pincers in front of her face to try and block the shot, uh, block the shot uh, and that will then reduce uh, your chance to hit. So another thing that I've seen a lot of people doing is taking a shot from a long distance away and expecting it to hit. So if we go ahead and like fire at uh, that guy's right at the back. Let me see if I can get into a slightly better uh, position uh, where we can see him a little bit better. Uh, maybe we move over. Maybe we move over here. So let's go ahead and take this shot. So we've got this guy right at the back here. He's kind of hiding behind the grass, which is a little bit annoying. But even if I aim at him, I've seen some people put the crosshair on and go, well, okay, the, he the head is now highlighted. So if I fire, I'm, I'm going to hit him. We're going to hit him in the head. Again, that's not the case. Remember, only about 50% of the bullets are going to hit within that red circle, and they will hit anywhere within the red circle. Um, but 100% of the bullets will go within the blue circle. So... There's a lot of empty space around that target where the bullets could miss. Now, luckily, with something like the machine gun, it fires 10 shots, and each of those shots does 4 damage per turn, uh, or 4 damage per hit. Also, the, um, the heavy machine gun has an extra little ability down here, which is armor shred. It's, it's, it's clipping off the edge of my screen there, but it's 15%. So every single round that hits a target has a 15% chance to shred one point of armor from that particular body part. Now, if I actually fire at this, there's every chance that we will do a lot of damage to it. So we did hit. Obviously, some of them did go quite wide. But because you've got 10 shots, you do have an increased chance of, uh, of hitting. Obviously, the more bullets you fire, the more chance you've got of hitting. Now, another thing that I've seen um, people sort of misunderstanding is the way that cover works. Now, in XCOM, in order for cover to be effective, you have to be right next to cover. Now, there is definitely a reason to be next to cover in Phoenix Point. If you go and stand right next to cover, you will automatically hunker down. As you can see there, uh, this assault actually crouched automatically because he stood next to cover. If I go and stand him out in the open, he will stand up. If I go and stand him next to cover, he will spot a crate and then he will crouch down. So being next to cover actually makes you uh, try and reduce your profile. Now, if I were to aim at one of these crab men, it's not too bad this one because obviously we're standing up. So the cover isn't really in our way and we could go ahead and take a shot at this guy if we wanted.
It's also worth noting, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier, that when you actually fire using this method, when you just use the sort of quick lock on, it's exactly the same rule. You still have these two circles. Uh, the maximum uh, size of the blue circle, your soldier's aim, is exactly the same in this mode as it is in this mode. The only difference is, in this mode, it locks on automatically to the to the center of mass. So you, you don't have manual control, but it's the same cone, it's the same hit rules. The only difference is there it's automatic, and here you're manually aiming it. So you've got the same chance to hit, whether you fire this way, or whether you fire using the manual aim. So if we actually find some uh, some other cover that I can get in between, because I want to sort of demonstrate my point here a little bit. Uh, let me just zoom out so I can find uh, a good place to potentially demonstrate this. I didn't do a very good setup uh, on this map. Let's, let's go ahead and stand over here. So I'm going to go and move my assault here. And I want to fire at this crab man. I want to fire at this guy here. So if I go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll do a manual manual aim. If I go and move over here. Now you can see this cover is in the way. Right? This lamppost is right in the way of the shot. So even though I'm not directly next to the cover. The crab man isn't directly next to the cover. But it's still in the way. Even if we were to sort of... Um, automatically target him that is still in the way and this is another reason why the manual aim is important because we could sort of try and aim off to the right here again there is a little bit of empty space we could potentially miss firing into the carapace isn't a great idea anyway but we could potentially miss that shot but if i was to fire here for example i'm aiming right at his body some of these shots are going to hit the lamppost now i may destroy the lamppost which will then open up the space to fire but in this case, we didn't manage to take the lamppost out. So all of the shots hit. Now, this is what I'm trying to trying to demonstrate here, is the fact that cover is effective even if you're not stood right next to it. So in terms of XCOM, um, this cover would have provided no defensive statistic increase to this guy. He would have to be next to it. And then in order for me to actually... Um, circumvent that i'd have to be at 90 degrees to him or further around and flank him so there's no such thing as flanking in phoenix point either however uh, there are certain advantages to being um on the right side of your opponent so for example when you start looking at something like these crab men brawlers they have a heavy carapace they have a shield arm if i was to take aim and I've, I've used my movement up but if i was to take aim with uh, my uh, heavy here all he's seeing is basically the shield and the carapace, which means it's very, very difficult for me to do any damage from this direction. If I was to get my uh, technician here and fire from this side, uh, we can hit the, uh, the pincer arm, we can hit the legs, we can hit the torso and the head. So it's certainly important to try and get behind or around the sides of certain enemies because they do have more i mean again they have quite a lot of armor on the back so that's going to be different for each enemy and different for each mutation so it's really important to try and keep in mind the direction you want to attack from so you have the best chance of hitting your target but uh, this video has gone on for quite a while but that these are the main points that i wanted to get across that the the ballistic system works so much differently from XCOM and it does give you so much more tactical choice because you have that ability to manually control those shots and especially when you've got someone like the sniper the sniper is very accurate so you can see that the circle is really really small so at this range I mean I could probably you know pick a body part and almost be guaranteed to hit so if i pick this guy's head there's no way i'm gonna miss this guy's head now if you actually look here on the right hand side you can see that the sniper rifle actually does fires one shot and it does seven damage per shot now the head does have two armor so that takes it down to five damage but the sniper rifle also has this armor piercing again it's it's sort of clip, clipping off the uh edge of the screen there but it's armor piercing level one which means that it actually ignores one armor so even though this crab man has two armor on his head uh we only count one of those which means we would do six damage even though he only has three health on the head it would come off his entire hit pool uh, and his entire hit pool is six uh six health so that should kill him and you can see that little flashing red skull and crossbones uh just above him which means that it will be a kill shot so if i were to go ahead and fire at his head guaranteed hit six damage 
and he is down. And that is the way the ballistic system works on Phoenix Point. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this video has given you a little bit more insight into the way that works, if it's something that you've been sort of struggling to understand or it hasn't come across in things like the trailers and, and other gameplay and stuff like that, because it is one of the major mechanical differences between Phoenix Point and XCOM. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, goodbye for now.